It's often just the two of us for board games, so we love to have games that scale well from two players to a full table. Welcome to Wisco Dice! Hey yo folks, I'm your host, the Conzie with the most, and I am joined today by... Hey, I'm Suzanne. And like many of you, Conzie and I can't always get our gaming friends together whenever we feel like playing a game. You know, for us, we want to play a game sometimes early in the morning, right after work, middle of the night when we can't sleep. Uh, so, we're... <laughs> so, you can speak for yourself. I'm snoring. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yeah, so, you know, we're just always wanting to play games over here. So, of course, that means for us, it's very important to have games that scale from two players all the way up to full player counts for those games. Yeah, so for today, what we wanted to do is provide you our top 10 list of games that we feel play great at two players and also scale up to four, five, or more players. So don't forget while you're at it to go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Of course, you can ring that bell for notifications as well. With that, let's go ahead and dive into our full top 10 two-player games that also scale well at other player counts. Game number 10. All right, for game number 10, we have Ganymede by Sorry We Are French. This is a tableau building game where you are working to colonize Ganymede and you're collecting settlers from Earth and sending them on a journey and eventually launching a ship to Ganymede. So this one, uh, with the base game, it just scales very well, we found, with having two players, which we play it a lot quite with two players, and also for a more in our gaming group when we have uh, some friends over to play with us. Yeah launching your you're getting your settlers to moving from earth across the board and eventually launching on ships to go uh to ganymede they uh ultimately get you scoring cards which start to build a tableau and based on the different types of colored settlers that's how you kind of score a bunch of points and i think it ends whenever somebody gets four missions i think it yep, is once you've lost four ships it yeah. ends uh so, so yeah, yeah it starts out slow and then it definitely builds and all of a sudden the game is done yeah, it's a really fun yeah. game. We worked out really well for us on game nights. Works really well uh, for us if we want to play a quick game. Uh, it is definitely a game that I think we've played a little less since the expansion came out for, or since we got the expansion for it, anyways. Right. Yeah, it just adds a, f a few more rules you have to remember and mechanics. I am not good but... with picking games up off the shelf if they've if I can't remember the rules very quickly. So, so but yeah, so that is number ten on our list is Ganymede by Sorry We Are French. Game number nine. For our ninth game on the list, we have Gloomhaven from Cephalofair Games. Now, Gloomhaven is on a lot of people's number one, was on the number one of Board Game Geek for a long time for top games in the hotness. But uh, for one of the things that we, I think, have a, is a big kind of complaint with it is it's very difficult to get to the table consistently at player counts more than just the two of us. We tried very hard when we started our Gloomhaven campaign to get another player or two to be interested and be, make a commitment of showing up for 60, 70, 80, maybe 100 you know, sessions of getting through this game. It just it's doesn't work out. Commitment. It just ends up being the two of us. Yeah, it's a huge commitment yeah. to try to commit that much time to a board game. And so, like a lot of groups, that have probably made their way through Gloomhaven. It's just mostly the two of us with, yeah, I don't think we've actually managed to actually gather more than two of us at the game. However, we can see mechanically how this game really would yeah. thrive at a, four, a full player count. I think a lot of these viewpoints, even though we haven't played Frosthaven yet, are probably going to apply to that as well. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a, definitely a fun game where you're going on these adventures it does take a lot of time to set up so you put it up you want to leave it up for a bit uh, yeah we had to acquire a second game table just so we could 
leave Gloomhaven up for a few days. Yeah, but it's, you know, it is a, it's a fun game. You get to go on, you know, this adventure, pretend that you're a barbarian or an elf or whatever, and, uh, you know, battle yeah. your way through. Yeah. No, so. Gloomhaven is brilliant for a lot of reasons, and yes. it's uh, one of my favorite dungeon crawl games to play, but it's, yeah, it is a, a little bit of a challenge to set up, and it's even more of a challenge to get a group of more than the two of us to show up on a regular basis. So that is Gloomhaven from Cephala Fair Games. Game number eight. So game number eight for us is Reef by Next Move Games. So Reef is a very colorful, abstract, coral lane game where you are matching patterns on cards to win points or get additional pieces of coral. We've had a good time with this game. It's traveled with us a couple on a couple trips uh, because it is easy to set up. You can play it outdoors. The play, pieces have a nice weight to them. Uh, so it's, you know, it's just a, it's a very colorful game. And again, also like everything on this list, it does, you know, you add a couple more people to it. It doesn't dramatically change the gameplay. Oh yeah, so. I mean, we had a wonderful time playing this in Punta Cana. Oh, when we yeah. were there on vacation, that was, you know, kind of the perfect game to pair while we were sitting there with a couple of nice cocktails uh, on the beach, just kind of hanging out. So, yeah, absolutely travels well. I've played this in hotel lobbies. I've played this all over the place uh, as far as a game. It, I, it plays very well with the two of us if we want something that's quick and, and sets up and tears down pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, it's a great game for that. So that was Reef by Next Move Games. Game number seven. So the next game on our list is Spirit Island from Greater Than Games. Spirit Island is the very first game that we actually got out and broke out and played on our brand new uh, gaming table here from Geek and Son. And it is one of our favorite games to play at two players. In fact, it is the yes. only game on our top 10 games that we wanted to play on this table for the first time that actually was a crossover and we actually I, just I agreed to play. Top 10 list of overall games it's right now. It's also close. our only crossover. Yeah, it's so it's it <laughs> is really definitely really like one it. of the one of the games that we both really love to play and get play with each other and we really love this game at two player. It falls down a little bit on this list because we feel like this game falls down a little bit when you scale it up to multiple players. While I've had an enjoyable time playing the game at multiple players, I think the playtime really starts to drag on and it starts to become a game that instead of being able to finish in a nice 90 to 120 minutes, it starts going to the three to four hour category and that becomes a challenge, not only to get it to the table if you're gonna play it at game night. Oftentimes I'm playing, when I'm playing with those larger player counts, I'm playing with newer players who oftentimes are getting a little frustrated because the game can have a very, about mid game, it always has that kind of like, oh my God, we're going to lose. I don't no idea how we're gonna win. And then for those people that are experienced with it, you start to see that turning point. It's like, okay, okay. You know, we just have like another hour of this misery before <laughs> the hour. game will start probably turning because yeah, when you're playing with three yeah. or four players, and I have not played it at the five or six player counts, which you can play with the, uh, uh, one of the expansions expands it up to that player count for some crazy reason. I guess you want to play Spirit Island all day long. I'm... So I, I do feel that it does have some drawbacks if you are playing at a higher player count with new players or players that you maybe don't know as well. One thing I think that's worked out well with Konzi and I is that we have played this so many times. We both know each other's play style. We make decisions pretty easy and quickly. Uh, we've got our shorthand that we just kind of speak about, hey, I'm thinking I'm going to do something along these lines because you're not supposed to tell exactly what you're going to do, uh, which does help eliminate some of the quarterbacking that can happen in a lot of cooperative games. So I think if you're playing at a higher player count, if you play with the same group a couple times, It'll start speeding up. Yeah, I think this You'll game. Get used to each this other. game, yep. The larger groups, I've seen a lot of quarterbacking start to happen. Yep, it's definitely one that I, we love it as too. But it, like I said, it scales up and it scales okay. But there it's, are a lot of a lot of little gotchas that you have to watch out for. So that's why yeah. it fell as far as as far as it did on this list. Yeah. 
So that is Spirit Island from Greater Than Games. Game number six. So game number six is Tapestry by Stonemaier Games. And this is a widely popular game that I'm sure many of you may have heard of. There's been expansions upon expansions of it. But looking at the base game and even with some of the expansions, it does well at two players and it goes up, you know, and maybe it adds some time. But you're moving around a track, you have resource management, you kind of got these cards that you get, you have that you need to play at the right times to advance, there is battles, there's, so you get some player conflict and interaction. And you get that at, you know, both a two player level, there's a smaller board mm -hmm. for smaller player counts. And then, you know, as you grow up, you, it's still there. And so I, I definitely like this game for its scalability, its enjoyability, and that the time doesn't really take that much longer when you increase the player count. Right. The player turns are fairly quick. If you're, unless you're taking an income turn, which only happens five times in the game, your turns are fairly rapid. I do like this game a little bit better at the three to four player counts than I do at the two player count. Thus why it's where it is in the list. But I absolutely love Tapestry. It's one of it's one of my more favorite games. Didn't quite make the cut in the in the top ten recently, but it is a game that I do like getting to the table. If it wasn't for the fact that those little bit larger player counts, those four to five player counts, oftentimes make it a little too long to try to squeeze in on a game night. When you're starting to push, you know, if we start at six thirty and we're pushing 9, 30, 10 o'clock, that's starting, it starts to get a little late for some folks that are traveling. Yeah. But yeah, it's I mean, a It's definitely it's a one game. that you can plan your move out ahead of time. So it gets oh, yeah. to your turn. You should know what you're there's, doing. There's very so, little. I yeah. like that at a higher yeah. player count move, games. Move on a track, get the thing, you're, you're done. Next player. <laughs> move on a track, get the thing, next player. And, right. it, and it's really not a heavy amount of, hey, which track do I want to move on or you know, if I move on that track, this is, no, it's, it's just, it's pretty straightforward. It's a lot of solo-ish play while at the same time, there's just enough interaction with the map. And so uh, even in a two-player, even in a two-player game, there's a lot of decision-making on how you, how you advance and where you place on the actual overworld map. There's a lot of decision-making on the tracks and trying to, you know, oh, hey, do I race, try to race up with the civilization up these tracks? Or am I going to get comp competition for the monuments if I raise up those tracks? There's a lot of still little interactive things and decisions yeah. you have to make. But enough of it is just like, yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah. So that is Tapestry by Stonemaier Games. Game number five. So our next game on the list is Isle of Sky from Lookout Games. Isle of Sky is an economic tile laying game where you're setting the prices behind your player screen of three tiles that you randomly draw each round and all of the other players are doing this at the simultaneously and then you reveal simultaneously and decide uh, when it's your turn if you're going to buy one of the other players tiles uh, for what the prices that they've set ultimately you you want to end up with a bunch of money so that you can afford the higher higher and higher prices that the other players are buying are setting for their tiles and you want to end up with acquiring as many tiles as possible through the course of the game that you can add, add to your little Isle of Sky kingdom and see if you can accumulate the most points. Nice, It's a nice mix of mm -hmm. mechanics from games like Carcassonne while still having economic mechanics and it works surprisingly well at two players although it can be a little predictive almost with the price setting. But uh, it, it does work very well at two players, surprisingly well for a game like this. Uh, but it still scales up very well. I've had an amazing time playing this mm -hmm. at higher player counts, at two players, what, at whatever player counts. And the expansions, well, at least the one expansion, doesn't really make it too much more complicated or add anything no. else. So it's usually not a bad game to actually remember even when we add in the expansions. Yeah, I mean, we've ex taught this game with the expansions to new players and there's not, it's not overly complicated when you're adding the expansions in if you got the base game for it. And yeah, this is just, 
it's been a game I have enjoyed immensely ever since we purchased this game. Um, yeah. Yeah. This came from game. a recommendation from BK over at Misty Mountain Games. Oh, yeah. We walked in the store just randomly looking at board games and the owner, uh, BK, gave us a, a solid recommendation here. Absolutely would recommend this game to other people if you're looking for a game to fit your two player needs, but love to be able to scale up to four or five players for your game nights. Doesn't take a whole lot of time to play. It's even no. even at uh, max players because there's so much that's happening simultaneously uh, in, during the game that you can easily bang this game out in a 90 minute play on a, on right. a game night. And I'll note also that this game is language independent. So if you have a gaming group where not everyone speaks the same language, hey, this is a great game for that mm -hmm. then too. Or even if you've got some kids that are great at gaming, but maybe are still developing their language, their reading skills, this would work for them also. Yeah, and then Lookout Games, uh, because they're an international uh, European company, they usually include, I think the rules are in multiple languages yes. as well. Yeah, right I think in the there's box, at least so. three languages in the back. So, so you have yeah. lots of opportunities there. So that is Isle of Sky from Lookout Games. Game number four. Okay, number four on our list is Sentinels of the Multiverse, the Definitive Edition by Greater Than Games. This game is a gem for us. Like It's one of I mean, your favorites. <laughs> it is one of my favorites. I'm pretty sure it was on one of my top ten lists we recently did. If it not, it was, yeah, it, I think it it was. was really short, close there. It's a cooperative game where you and your player, other players are superheroes trying to defeat a villain, and then you have a, a environment, kind of like a thing as a location that also either can help or hinder you. Uh, so cards are coming out. You're working together to with your strengths of your superheroes uh, to get mm -hmm. benefits, and you know. Yeah, so you're, it's you're. I mean, you're ultimately trying to defeat the villain, right? And, yeah. and you're working together, and you have the environment working together. Against Sometimes you or working, with you. working with you yeah. or against you, and and you and you have these all these things that are going on, and the the villains always feel super characterful and what they're doing and how they play. Um, I like this this game definitely better than I like Marvel Champions in that regard. It feels far more narrative, even though I like the superheroes in Marvel Champions yeah. better, just because they're Marvel. Uh, but this game does fall down a little bit at larger player counts because. There are times where even in the definitive edition, which the rules are far more cleaned up and, and better, there can be instances where, uh, how does that work? And that actually happened at our most recent play yeah. and it kind of, it kind of bogged the play down a little bit. So you, you definitely want to make sure that you have a, a group of people who are playing this game that uh, are okay with kind of winging it on the fly and when in doubt air in the air in the side of caution yeah. and give the villain the advantage yes but I, the theme can also come out in, in this game like if you read the lore books that come along with it it kind of gives you a description of these superheroes you may not be familiar with and i don't know i i still think it's a lot of fun to have a group of you know five of us that get together and make this team and just see what we could all do together as a team. So yeah, no, it was, it's, it's it's good fun. It's definitely fun, and, and a game that doesn't take too long on game night either. We got to, we recently got this to the table we played it on twice. a game night, and we did play it twice in easily in a game night yep. against two different villains too. Yes, and change up characters. Yep. So, so easy to reset and play again. Doesn't take a heap of time. Very yeah. enjoyable. Very narrative. Love it. So that is Sentinels of the Multiverse, the definitive edition by Greater Than Games. Game number three. All right, for our third game on the list, this is a game that uh, we really had to think, I think pretty hard before we added it to the list because we didn't want the newness factor to completely yes. be making a decision here for us. But we've had it, we played it actually quite a bit lately, and that is yeah. Distilled from Paverson Games. So in Distilled, you uh, have just recently inherited a distillery and you're uh, trying to distill a spirit each round over the course of seven rounds. You have a signature spirit, which will score you a keep of points if you can oh, manage yeah. to pull that off. And you're inquiring different ingredients and 
bottles and barrels and and items for your distillery as well as distillery enhancements that can add uh, whether it's staff that or or equipment that can add competitive advantage to your distillery and ultimately at the end of seven rounds whoever's had basically gained the most i don't know it's prestige points or something like that distill points i can't i don't know what he calls them but ultimately whoever has the most points wins and so uh, I've played it at max player count, absolutely loved it and enjoyed it. I played it with a massive migraine, still enjoyed it. <laughs> and we got to play it at two player, really enjoyed it. Actually played super fast as a two player game. Yep. It wasn't for the amount of setup, although the organization and the storage oh, that's, in this, that's included in this, this game, game is amazing. Um, yeah. So this game might be a little higher up if you asked us next year. Or it might slip a little bit, but I thought it was a great two-player game, and I love it at all player counts. It really scales well, and has one of the best learn-to-play experiences yes. I've experienced in a board game. Yes, the, if you are teaching this game or it's the first time you're playing it, go through the first taste. It makes it so smooth yeah, it's a for first, playing first it. First taste is a separate rule book that comes with it that is all about teaching a group of up to five players how to play this game for the first time. Yep. And it's, you just hand the book to each player and, they, and have them read off their sections when it's their time. Absolutely works wonderful. Yes, yes. and the like I mentioned before, like the organization components that come with this game do help with the setup quite a bit. And, you know, I like having a nice organized game when I open up the box, so. That yep. gets bonus points for me Absolutely. for me with this game. But yes, it's definitely a fun game. And even if you're not into uh, liquors or distilling, there's enjoyment in this game and there's laughter. And that's all I'm going to say. You got to play the game and you'll find the funny bits out. Excellent. Well, that is Distilled from Paverson Games. Game number two. So number two on our list is Mansions of Madness by Fantasy Flight Games. And we play, we have the second edition of it. There's a few different editions out there. Yeah, I should note, it's, this is the second edition of the game that we are putting here, not the first edition. Yes. So with second edition, uh, if you know anything about Fantasy Flight Games, you know they kind of end up coming with a whole lot of components. So this one, still kind of working out the best way to organize it in the box. But you are working cooperatively, for the most part, uh, with the other players to solve some sort of mystery. There are, or defeat some monsters or spirits or whatever. There are different modules and scenarios you can play through with different difficulties. And it also, like, the different length of time. And I should note, all these scenarios are contained on an app that you download so it's got theme music and it might talk to you and it's got different sound effects which that app makes this scale very nicely you tell it which players you are which scenario you want how long you know and it just kind of calculates it all for you i've played both first and second edition of the game first edition did not require an app but you saw the entire map in front of you you saw Everything and if you somebody made the the person who was setting up the game, if they made a mistake, it could wreck the game for a game that you'd sit and play for maybe two or three hours. Versus with the app, you don't really know what's on the other side of that door. That might be a kitchen. That could be a bedroom. You kind of have to listen to or read the clues that are given when you when it describes the door to you to to give you an idea like oh hey you're hearing bangs and clanks like rattling pans from the other side of the door. Okay, oh, you hear what sounds like maybe a roar from the other side of the door. Hmm, maybe don't open that one. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you open it and find a zoo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't know, right? And, and it's all mythos-based. It's all Cthulhu yes. mythos, uh, which is oftentimes uh, really cool. I enjoy the, the theme of that that brings. Of course, it also means if you're a proper... Lovecraftian that you've followed the mythos stuff it also means that with particularly the more challenging scenarios you're probably going to lose more often than win which means when you do get those wins it's just that much more satisfying yes, it's definitely satisfying to win this game but also when you lose it doesn't feel that bad because you've been like going through it's like this horror movie in some aspects and you know you're just your party is getting picked off and you're just kind of like oh good I guess we're all dead. <laughs> I don't have to battle this monster anymore. 
So that is Mansions of Madness by Fantasy Flight Games. Game number one. All right, for our top game that scales well at two players and all the way through all player counts, it is going to be Lost Ruins of Arnok from Czech Game Edition, or CGE for short. Lost Ruins of Arnok is one of my favorite games to play currently. I love it with the expansion. I'm super excited for the new expansion they just announced. If you haven't seen that, you should head over to CG CGE's website or their social media to check it out. Uh, but it is a fabulous experience. You're basically an archaeologist that is exploring this island, discovering new sites, overcoming guardians, and trying to outrace your competitors for being able to document and bring back all of the findings that you are able to discover about the locations and locales uh, back to your museum and whatever uh, sponsors have sponsored your expedition and so you're ultimately going to through the course of the game acquire artifacts and items and all of these other tokens and bits and bobs to ultimately lead you to the path of having the most points at the end of course the first expansion that came out added asymmetric starting characters which was awesome and really didn't change the game at all it, or i guess it, oh, changes, it changes the game, the game changes the game quite a bit but it doesn't change the mechanics of the game no it doesn't it just it just kind of gives you a little pointer in the direction of how to play and what to do and yeah. then gives you a little bit more different or alternate uh, tracks to so research on. And not whatnot. all players are trying to do the same uh, actions on the first couple turns with the asymmetric. They still characters. might be, but... <laughs> but they're different. But you might have benefits where you might actually want to do something where you're buying more tools and someone else really just wants to explore so mm -hmm. it changes a little bit what you're doing, which I think definitely helps, especially when you have the higher player counts, uh, because then you can feel like you can still get what you need to advance. Uh, absolutely. So. It's such a brilliant game and plays very, very quickly, whether it's just a two player or a full player count, full four players. And I've played it. I've played this game between board game oh, arena gosh. and in-person plays. I have to have 60 or 70 plays of this game now. It's just absolutely in the top of my list of games that I like to play. And uh, because it, it's easy to approach, it's easy to teach, and it's easy to get at the table. And it, and it has a, a great play time. It very consistently, even at full player counts, gets done in about 90 minutes. So yeah, it's great for game nights. It's great for uh, pickup games during, day, during game day. It's... It's just, it's just great. It's nice. And the, the, <laughs> the board has really nice colors and table presence without being overwhelming. Yes. You know, so there's that. And then... The, Iconography is great. Yes. The resources, the tactile experience from a lot of the resources is nice too, so... I just need to get it upgraded with upgraded coins and compasses. <laughs> But, I mean, even just out of the box, it's nice. And we should say that the, the baseboard has two sides to it. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, the beginner-friendly side, and then you flip it over, and you go to the snake, I think it's the snake temple on the yep. other side, and it adds, a, you know, some some new challenges. So, mm -hmm. yep. so there's tons definitely of replayability. a fun game to, to check this out mm -hmm. if you can. Absolutely. So that is Lost Ruins of Arnok from CGE. And with that, I think that concludes our top 10 two games that play well at two players, but also scale well to other player counts. Of course, we caveated some of the games in this list, maybe shifted around because they were better at two players or better, you know, maybe with multiple players. Um, so they shifted, but we really do enjoy these games when we play just the two of us. And they're oftentimes games that are our first two go to grab in our game room when we're not digging out or trying to uh, clear like to games new. off of our <laughs> table of opportunity. Right. Yes. So check out these games and let us know in the comments what games you enjoy playing at two players, but also um, have played and enjoyed at higher player counts. Because we'd love to add to our list or hear what you're interested in. 
And while you're leaving that comment, don't forget to hit the like on this video and subscribe to our channel so we can provide you with more content also regarding these board games. Hey there, it's Konzi. Thank you so much for watching. We put out videos weekly here at Wisco Dice. Check out our channel for more great videos and don't forget to subscribe. We also have more great content on our website at wiscodice.com. Of course, we do this all for you, the viewers. So please like the video if you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.